Hey guys, welcome back to Out of Bounds. I'm Chelsea Thomas. And I'm Manny Adeye. And today we have a very special guest, my good friend Taylor Ringgold. Thanks for being here. He is our MLB expert and analyst for the show. He also has his own show, The Ringgold and Rubash Show. Check yeah. him out. Yep, yeah, Monday through Wednesday at 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. on sportsandgo1.com. So, Sunday night, the Astros beat the Dodgers 13-12 in a 10-inning slugfest. That shit was crazy. I mean, it was ridiculous. There was like 14 pitchers used, man. There was a lot of home runs, and there was a lot of young guys who were playing outrageous baseball. I've, I've seen a lot of World Series. I've never seen anything like this. 25 combined runs in one game, seven home runs, like you said, 14 pitchers used, five hours in 17 minutes. Epic. Of epic baseball. Mm -hmm. Just unreal. I mean, there's better games where it was like David Freeze walk off home run against the Rangers in game six. I think that was 2011. And you had other ones like last year's game seven when the Cubs won. And 2001, Jeter hit the walk off home run off the Diamondbacks. And that went to a walk off in game seven. But this is back and forth, home run, home run, home run. Guys are coming out of nowhere playing really well. So, as someone who used to play baseball, what stood out to you as like the craziest thing in the last night's game? That both these teams never quit. There was no dying. These guys were going back and forth. And um, Alex Bregman, the guy who hit the walk off last night, he said in an interview that, you know, once they gave up the runs, and I think it was the eighth inning, they just came to the dugout and said, look, we're going to play loose. And that's you got you to play loose in a pressure situation like that. You have to play loose, or if you play uptight, you know, I played college baseball four years of that. If you play uptight, you're not going to be successful. Everyone's in a mood, everyone's pissed because you just let another run again. You had to lead, let it up. You got to play relaxed, have fun. That's what you, they, that's what they started playing for. Start playing to have fun with it. And I mean, I'll never ever forget this. I was debating. I'm like, yeah, this game's really good. I just it this, is, off. this is the best game ever watched on TV. But how would so there were 14 different pitches used yeah. last night? How is that going to affect? The next game, you know, what, what are we gonna be able to see? Like, what's gonna happen? So, so you game six and game seven. Today's an off day. We're traveling to LA. This is a benefit for both sides because the bullpen, the, all those guys that were used, 12 relievers, not minus the two, the 14, so it was minus the two first starters. They're gonna have a little rest. They got their, their rehab, their throwing career programs, icing up, doing physical therapy, whatever, what have you. But this can ultimately ruin for I think the Astros most of all. Dodgers have had the best bullpen tied by the Yankees all year. The Astros bullpen has been very inconsistent. They have really good guys and they have some guys that suck. Like Ken Giles, a lot of talent, was told before last night's game he is not going to pitch. He lost his closer role and they needed pitchers last night and AJ Hinton's manager said I'm not going to pitch him. And that right there is a feeling that you don't want to have that your coach does not trust you on the mound because he blew it the other night. But um, like you said, this is going to come down to managing at the end of the day with your bullpen because Dodgers are win or go home situation. The Astros are in the best situation possible because they have a little breathing room. They have an extra, they have their winning, one win away from winning the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's going to be all about managing. When's the last time the Dodgers won the World Series? It was 88. And this would be the first time Houston wins a World Series. Correct. Ever. Yeah. Yes, they went to the World Series in 2005 against the White Sox and they got swept. So, Sheesh. Yeah, so it's been a while. They've had they've had some really horrific teams. They have an past. incredibly young roster. I think that's one thing that sticks out to me the most. A couple of guys, a couple of years ago, two, three years ago, were still in college playing ball. Yeah. And now they're in the World Series in the biggest stage of all. It's crazy. Yeah, you have Brainer in the center field. From UConn, you know, Correa from, drafted out of Puerto Rico. Uh, he lives he lived in Puerto Rico, drafted mm -hmm. first overall. El Tuve, you had all these three guys. These guys aren't in their prime of their career, and they're the tops, top players in the game. And unfortunately, I don't know if they'll be able to keep all of them because of this, the salaries of these dealers. I mean, these guys are thirty million dollar players per year. So with the amount of talent, how young they are, they're going to be successful for the next five to six years. So what do you think that's happening in the next game? For LA to win and push it to game seven. They have to let Rich Hill pitch more than four innings. 
Rich Hill. He's an older guy, older pitcher. He's had some ups and downs in his career. He's a funky pitcher. He was not happy that he got taken out in game two. You, if you go right to the replay when Dave Roberts, great manager, took him out, he was furious. So you gotta let your guy go because bullpen's been taxed, bullpen's exhausted. Your starter has gotta go at least six, maybe seven innings. Astros got the best, one of the best pitchers in the game, Justin Verlander. He got traded from the Tigers to the Astros. Hasn't lost since he's been an Astro, including the postseason. It's 10 and up. It's crazy. 11 and up. So, Astros are in looking real good, but their bullpen is not good. But they have the offense and the starting pitcher to maybe help them out, win it all tomorrow.